Hi there, we are continuing on with our Canadian week. Today we are making our breakfast of the week, cinnamon buns from the Great Canadian Cookbook. So let's get to it. It's time for another episode of Cooking with Caitlin. That's me, enjoy. All right, so we have a stick of butter, cold to room temperature. Three quarters cup of brown sugar, half. I'm going to do two tablespoons of cinnamon to go in the cinnamon buns. Go a little under on this part. So we just went a little over. All right. Briefly, I'll probably wind up doing this by hand, but I always try to start with a fork. I don't know why. I know it's easier just to do it with hands. But you can kind of get that nice crumb of extra. I guess you could do it with like one of your panels on a stand mixer if you really wanted to, if you wanted to avoid doing it with your hand. I don't mind. I'm okay. This will be a nice breakfast to eat for the week. All right, let's move on to the next. All right, now we're putting in a cup and a half of hot water, half a cup of sugar, one cup of milk, one stick of butter, and then a teaspoon of all right for this is just gonna whisk that around hopefully it came out come on in All right, we're just gonna stir while the butter melts. Just let it do its thing. All right. Let's see if I can come up on the butter side. So we're just going to stir and let that melt. Okay. All right. Now we've got a cup I already pre-measured of lukewarm water. So I'll have lukewarm water. And need two tablespoons of sugar. The sugar over there. I hate to spill that. So, get it all nicely mixed in, and we're going to add our yeast. All 
remember having to do something like this in science class, but I believe it was with salt. I remember having to do it. Oh, wait. Now we are adding instant yeast to three packets of it. Three, pack three packages, every you want to phrase it. Alright, we got that third one in there. Let me double check. I don't remember if I start if I just leave it. Yeah, we're gonna stir it in until it gets foamy. We're gonna stir it in and then let it kind of rise. Are we gonna stir it until it gets a little foamy? Then we're gonna let it do its thing for about 15 minutes. Can really smell that yeast. Get all that mixed in. Sounds like a support stove. Alright, so our yeast got nice and foamy. We're going to put it into our butter mixture now. And it's all reacting. <laughs> and our butter had melted and then it's kind of clotting. But we're going to stir everything in and up and around. Now we're going to be adding flour. We're going to straight off the bat add in two cups. Get that mixed in. We'll be adding some more after that. Definitely need more than this much flour. Because it's still so liquidy. Trying to get it out that. It's just occurring to me that I should have used my stand mixer because I think I have a bread 
handle something like for doing stuff like this and if I had thought about it at length I would have remembered uh, well we'll remember for the next time Do remember that I'm using this as a start for two different recipes, so you'll hear me say this twice. It's not that I didn't learn my lesson, though not to say I wouldn't forget sometimes in the future, but at least for that, that's why. Okay. All right, now we're gonna be adding in another three cups of flour but we're doing it one cup at a time. Stirring in. So there's our first. There's our second cup. Ah. And then our third cup. Even that's not all the flour, there's still be a little bit more, but it's the main chunk of it all. Before I move to the next, hang on one sec. All right, just had to wash hands. Also, floured the surface. Now pour all the dough out. Wind up adding more flour in as we need it. As we need it and while we need it. Ha, huh. homonyms, such fun. Hopefully y'all find it as funny as I do. We've got a couple more cups of flour on the side that we'll be sprinkling in while we need. Um, we'll use, depending on kind of how long it takes to get more to the texture, might use all two of them, might only use one of them. If it's not quite there after the two cups and whatever's sprinkled on this, then we might have to get a little bit more. And that's okay. I'm gonna just get that out. Yep. Just trying to make sure we're getting all of it that we can. Not wasting all this goodness. All right. I'm going to start by sprinkling some on there. You want to never know why you don't add more of it when it's still in the bowl. 
I feel like I've done this before, the different recipe, and it was kind of the same thing, like, get you want it kneaded. I guess maybe it's something about kneading the flour into it, as opposed to just stirring it in the bowl. But I'm going to research that before the next time I do something like this. I hope I remember. Because it does just wind up so much messier, and seems unnecessarily so. There we go. Now it's getting in to the texture we're wanting. See, I don't see why you can't do that and then take it out and knead it and add a little more flour then. We're all on the stand mixer. I have to see if that bread thing on the stand mixer also is something that needs it. If you still have to take it out and knead by hand. I've got some research to do, y'all. I've got some research to do. But this is nothing if not a learning process altogether frequently. <laughs> if you can learn from me and things I do that it's like, hmm, could this be a little less complicated? Then I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you guys having it a little less complicated. <laughs> Sticky my hands are. course with everyone having learned to do all the bread stuff so early in COVID and me coming late to the party maybe everybody already knows all this stuff that I don't I should have researched more that's okay And you guys, if I don't remember to cut this down, you just have to watch all of it. Because <laughs> I can't touch anything on the laptop right now <laughs> to stop it. Cause my hands are so covered. Well, I incorporate. Yeah, we're going to need more flour. Way too sticky. All right, here's hoping that this is enough to do the trick. Still got some more standby if needed. But I think we're more in the right wheelhouse now. All right, got a few kind of sticky spots. We've also got plenty of flour to help not have it all be all over my fingers like the last time. Okay. So yes, now I can just knead it. It's good. Found a pretty sticky spot. Some more flour in on that. All 
All right. It's like so much easier on the fingers now. <laughs> One sec. All right, now we're gonna put it all in a pre-greased, uh, a pre-oiled bowl. I'm gonna cover it with a towel and we'll check back in about 30 minutes. All right, so we can see that the dough has risen, pretty much doubled in half. We're gonna just punch it down and then divide it into two. Doing one recipe for one video and then the other recipe for the other video, depending on which one you're viewing. It will be posted a little bit apart. All right, I'm just gonna separate it into two and come back. All right, we're preheating our oven to 350. We're getting our dough, just half that out. On a floured surface, we've got a floured rolling pin. And we're just rolling it into as much of a rectangle as we can. shaping it as we need to. I don't know if we need to move stuff around a little bit, which appears we might. I'm gonna kind of pinch things together. Kind of warm. Then do our rolling. There we go. That's more what we're looking for. Good. All right. I know it's been a while, but we've got our brown sugar mixture. We're gonna put on here. We're just getting it all along, even just a little bit at the edge for a seam. used to stuff being a little grumblier than this, but we're following the great Canadian cookbook recipe. I'm going to get a spatula. Hang on. No, nope, that's not actually going to do anything either. All right. Just... like oh spread it all around it's not quite liquidy enough to be like paste it's not quite crumbly enough to where it just automatically goes so this is a little different this was like one of the easiest things to do with it maybe it all just kind of spreads out while it bakes gonna be my guess but I still want it fairly equally distributed for that moment and it looks to be just kind of making sure if we've got any little gaps touching them up okay now we're going to tightly roll it
and then we're gonna cut and put it into the pan hang tight one sec all right now we're just cutting it into about inch thick rolls We're going to put them in our greased casserole dish. And the pictures I've seen have not been exactly like all in an asymmetrical row. So I'm just going to be, we're doing seam side down. And it kind of looked from all of them that it was sort of in a row, but also just sort of how they fit. So I'll show you here. I'll wipe down the bottom before I put it in the oven. So yes, we're just placing them in there. Then I'll check back in a sec. All right, we've got some melted butter. Just putting on the top. About a tablespoon or so. And then we're gonna cover these for about 30 minutes, let them rise. Then we're going to bake them at 350 for about half an hour. We will check back. Just wanted to do that. All right. All right. So we see they have risen up. It's great. Now they're going to go into the oven for 30 minutes and we will check back then. Right. It took about 33 minutes in total, but look at that. They're looking so good. We're just going to let them cool for a few minutes and then start noshing. Bon appetit. One thing I forgot, the one thing I forgot to mention is after they cool, when you take them out, you flip them upside down so you've got that nice stickiness. So there it is. Nice sticky cinnamon buns. Bon appetit.